In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. So today this video is going to be about the progressive demonic soup which call uh, they call themselves falsely progressive Christians. So I have noticed uh, that uh, they say some stupid things and they don't care like for example like Brandon Robertson uh, says uh, he said one one of his videos that uh, th he was holding the bible in his hand and he said the the bible doesn't uh, have not even a single uh, verse that condemns or is against uh, homosexuality sex before marriage and um, polyamorous relationships you know multiple people having like living together or having sex together so uh and he was totally fine i mean he knew that he was saying he's he's not he's not ignorant he's just uh, he's just a liar i mean he's stupid for choosing uh his sin over god his sins anyone who chooses sins over god and claims he's a christian he's a liar and stupid and he is i mean he he says he says one of the most uh, stupid, uh, laughable things, and he just uh, doesn't care him. And there is a guy who is also known uh, on TikTok. His name is Adam Erickson. He's also a, pro a progressive leader. The other guy, he said that uh, when uh, Apostle Paul said in First uh, Corinthians chapter six, verse nine, I believe, if not mistaken, that. Uh, when homosexuals doesn't enter the kingdom of God, homosexuals don't enter the kingdom of God. He said uh, those, the apostle Paul, he was talking about uh, uh, like men, adults, as, uh, having sex, raping children. That's what it means. Uh, that's the word uh, homosexual means in the Bible. And he, he said just have the truth because that also could mean homosexuality but also apostle paul the word also contain uh, the word also the word also cover uh, that the two men two male having sex together so it could the word could also uh, describe a man having sex with a child or a man having sex with other man so so say they say stupid things and they don't care if people call them liars or like they laugh at them so uh, I and they just they just keep doing it and they don't care so uh, my my I believe they do that because they are talking to the people like them for example like uh, most uh, all not most let's say most because maybe there are some people who don't know in the progressive demonic soup who call themselves a christian they uh they their the, their most important things is most likely is their sexual desires and that's why they even have no problem like making the lord jesus christ uh imperfect like he the lord jesus christ he made mistakes and he learned from his mistakes he will he's he's not like all perfect he had he made some mistakes and he had to learn from <laughs> so, i mean it's just saying it it sounds weird and it's stupid <laughs> so, i'm sorry <laughs> anyway so the lord jesus christ was an perfect man he wasn't perfect. He had uh, he had mistakes. He made mistakes, and he had to learn from them. And all and they have no problem like uh, bashing the Bible, like saying the Bible uh, has mistakes. And they pick and choose what uh, they pick. Uh, they pick and choose and obey what the uh, the things they like and the things they don't like. They would say they are not true. They they are not interested in obeying them. So basically, they are talking to the to people like them they know that the real christians are not going to believe them no matter what they can say from here to like to kingdom come till the second coming of the lord jesus christ they can say that the bible is okay with homosexuality with fornication with sex before marriage 
with uh, multiple sexual relationships, polyamorous, the, I believe that's what you call them, polyamorous relationships. And they know, they can say this till the next hundred years and true Christians are not going to believe them. So they are talking to people like them and also they are talking to, be, to ignorant people. Like people ignorant who don't know what the Bible says, they're not interested in reading the Bible, and they just want to be accepted, especially like, uh, you know, homosexuals, people with polyamorous relationships, uh, they are uh, people having polyamorous relationships, multiple sexual relationships together, uh, so they are trying to attract them. I mean, even if they stupid, they say the most stupid, laughable things. Even if if if, uh, if they get to attract one more follower or get one more follower uh, to their uh, to follow them and to agree with them, because that's why they seek they seek numbers. And I don't know why. I mean, I know that progressive demonic soup. Uh, Satan is behind them so and the way they twist scriptures it's so obvious I mean they don't they don't uh, put any effort to make it convincing they just lie and they twist it in a horrible way it's it's unconvincing it's it's really you need to be either like have very low IQ uh, IQ not even with <laughs> very low IQ, because they are telling you the Bible doesn't uh, uh, says nothing against uh, sexual immorality, so homosexuality, uh, polyamorous relationships, sex before marriage, and the Bible uh, does say uh, it has many verses against those things, against sexual immorality, so homosexuality, uh, sex before marriage, uh, and polyamorous uh, relationships. Anyways. And so they're talking to ignorant people who was just want to be accepted. And uh, so that's why they keep saying these stupid things and they don't care. I mean, can you imagine someone who calls himself Christian reverend who holds the Bible in his hand? And he tells people this Bible, like the Christian Bible, it has, there is not even, it doesn't contain not even one single <laughs> verse that condemns or against uh, homosexuality, sex before marriage, and polyamorous relationships. And of course there are, I mean. So they're tra targeting people who are like them, they don't care, have, uh, people who have chosen their sexual desires over God, and uh, ignorance, just the people who don't know, are not interested in reading and studying the Bible. And this is very dangerous, please. If you don't know that the what the Bible says, don't believe those progressive the demonic soup progressive leaders. They are liars. They would say anything and do anything to get more people to follow them, including lying. Like lying to them is not a problem. And for example, he said, uh, I'm going to read a few verses against uh, that condemns homosexuality. Leviticus 18:22. Do not have sexual relations with man as one does with the women, it's detestable or ab uh, abomination. Romans 1.32, although they, uh, Romans chapter 1 verse 32, although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these things, but also approve of those who practice them. First uh, Kings 15.12, he explained the male shrine prostitutes from the land and got rid of all the idols his ancestors had made and they tell you that uh, the Old Testament is only talk about like uh, uh, male prostitutes no the Old Testament condemns homosexuality in general Romans 127 in the same way men also abandoned natural relations with women and were and were inflamed with lust for one another men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves due penalty for their uh, error. Leviticus uh, again 22 to 24 do not have sexual relationship with man as one does with a woman this detestable do not have sexual relationships with relations with animals and defile yourself with uh, with it a woman must not present herself to an animal to have sexual relations with it that's a 
perversion. Do not defile yourself in any of these ways because this is how the nations that I am going to drive out before you became defiled. So even in the context, so it's, it says nothing. They say, tell you, this is about like two males are married and one is cheating on other. I mean, in the whole... <laughs> In the in the Torah and the five books, the very the uh, first five books in the Bible and the Old Testament says nothing about a male marrying another male, man marrying another man, it says nothing. Leviticus twenty thirteen: If a man has a sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman, both of them have done what is detestable; they are to be put to death. Their blood will be on their heads. And this is what they tell you, like the uh, Christians, like they hate homosexuals. Honestly, I don't have, I mean, I don't have any uh, hate against homosexuals. It's just homosexuality. They love their homosexuality. They define themselves as homosexuals. They think that's their identity. Satan has fooled them, has deceived them, made them believe that's, they, they, that's their identity, that they are homosexuals. They are even homosexuals before being the humans. So when they see, say something about homosexuality, they think um, uh, you hate them. If you disagree with them, that means you hate them. And they make also some excuses. For example, uh, they tell you like the some Christians who call themselves a Christians, fair Christians, they tell you that they uh, bully and they are true I believe that they bully uh, homosexuals and so the church every place every society every religion fake religion real religion like Christianity fake religion like Islam Hinduism uh, Mormonism Jehovah Witnesses has a ba good people and bad people has uh, nice people and evil people so even the lgbt community itself they have nice people and the nice people are much less than the evil and bully people so where you have many homosexuals who spit on people because they tell the uh, they tell them that homosexuality is a sin they would spit on them they would take their speaker they have uh, there are videos on youtube you see the lgbt community what they do to people who preaches the gospel I mean they they want you to treat them with love but uh, they don't want to treat you with love unless it's in front of cameras and in front of audience again uh, but again uh, this is a, uh, also a good chance to mention that bullying uh, as a Christian bullying anyone whether homosexuality or anyone else that's a sin and uh, like I said uh, many times before, uh, just because people go to churches, that doesn't mean they are uh, true Christians. Churches, uh, churches are filled with and packed with evil people, demonic garbage, who hate even God. Yes, churches are filled and packed because uh, 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 love in Christianity in the Bible is not uh, about feelings. It's uh, more about your actions. It's who you help, who you support. You, uh, this is the one who you obey. This is the one who you love, not the one you have feelings for, for him or for her. For example, uh, a, a a man can have feelings for his w wife, but he cheats on her. And when you ask him, "Do you love her?" Yeah, he would tell you, "Yeah, I love her." He means that he has feelings on her and he cheats on her. So what is the point? Or vice versa, the wife could uh, do the same thing. But maybe another person, he doesn't have those strong feelings for his wife, but he wouldn't cheat on his wife for, he wouldn't do it for any reason. Not even for like a billion dollars. He would stay faithful because he loves God and he respects his wife. So which one loves his wife more? The one who has strong feelings for his wife and he cheats on her? Or the one has like a mild feelings, but he respects her and he won't cheat on her. And besides, the feelings comes when we obey God. When we obey God, God rewards us with feelings. 
but if our feelings they just become that's what they are like just they just stay feelings they we don't use the, we don't use those feelings to uh, obey God and please God those feelings are worthless it doesn't matter how much even if we are truly if we have fire inside for God and by the end of the day uh, we don't obey him we we don't want to obey him it's our feelings even this fire unfortunately it's worthless because this is what God uh, consider love obeying him you just if you disobey God you don't love him you obey God you love him and besides with the obedience comes reward comes faith comes feelings comes love comes you become stronger you grow in your uh, relationship with God and also so we're gonna continue reading uh, verses against uh, homosexuality in the Bible first Timothy uh, chapter 1 verse 8 to 11 we know that the law is good if anyone uses it, uh, uses it properly. We also know, uh, know that the law is made not for the righteous, but for the lawbreakers and rebels and ungodly and sinful, the unholy and irreligious, for those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers, for the sexually immoral, for those practicing homosexuality, so homosexuality is a sin. There is no way around it. You cannot transform. You cannot change sin to love. Homosexuality is a sin. For slave traders and liars and perjurers, I'm sorry, don't know how to say it. perjurers, perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to the sound doctrine that confirms the gospel concerning the glory of the blessed God which he entrusted to me, to Apostle Paul. Hebrews 13, 1-5 Keep on loving one another uh, as a brothers and sister. Do not forget the hospital, uh, hospitality to strangers for by so doing some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in a prison as you were together in them with a prison and those who are mistreated as if yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all. Marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money. Love of money and be content with what you have because God has said never I will leave you never will I forsake you and we also we can see that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ in Mark 6 uh, he said that uh, our marriage is uh, so I'm gonna just read from 1st Corinthians um, Uh, chapter 7 so 1st Corinthians chapter 7 so uh, this, this is Apostle to Paul and by the way uh, you cannot if you believe if you're a true Christian you would believe what God said uh, not just the Lord Jesus Christ God used apostles to uh, to deliver his messages and his commandments to the people he for example he cannot just say I'm gonna just uh, obey what the Lord Jesus Christ said in the four uh, Gospels and I'm gonna ignore what the Apostles said in their their epistles that's <laughs> that's a lie because who used the the epistles God the Holy Spirit that's God the Holy Spirit you cannot that's just a silly and stupid excuse for not obeying God for, uh, for example when they say uh, a woman can be a pastor because they don't think that uh, they should obey obey Apostle Paul. Of course, God the Holy Spirit. Do you think uh, Apostle Paul uh, wrote something against God and it's in the Bible? Of course not. He teaches something against the, the will of God the Holy Spirit? No. That's, we're talking about one of the greatest Christian, one of the greatest Christian men in human history. Apostle Paul, he's not just... 
He's a, he's an apostle and he's also one of the most faithful Christians in human history, in Christian history and period. So you cannot just ignore the epistles. That's why we have the Holy Bible. We, we don't obey half, half of it and ignore half of it. Or like 25% of it and uh, obey 25% of it and ignore the 75% of it. We obey everything. And in the Old Testament there are like just uh, ceremonial uh, uh, rituals, I believe. That's what we don't ignore. However, we don't, we still obey the Ten Commandments. It's not like we cannot kill in the Old Testament and we can't kill in the New Testament. It's not like we cannot steal in the Old Testament and we can steal in the Old in the New Testament. It's not like we cannot sleep with men. We cannot practice homosexuality in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament we can practice homosexuality. That's a different. This is a uh, way different than uh, like uh, the commandments that can uh, concerns eating and rituals. We're talking about uh, morality here. So this is Apostle Paul to, uh, and. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse uh, 1. It's good for man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, because of the sexual sexual immorality. So here Brandon Robertson said he, there is not even a single <laughs> verse that condemns sexual immorality. I'm sorry, not sexual immorality. Sex before marriage. So this is it's uh, Apostle Paul. 1 Corinthians and verse 1. It's good for man not to touch a woman. Verse 2. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband. So if, if um, sex before marriage is not sexual immorality, why he's telling, why Apostle Paul is telling people to get married man to woman, male to female, and uh, women should have their husbands because of the sexual immorality. The, so, sex before marriage is sexual immorality. Let the husbands render to his wife the affection do her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. Again, this is uh, 1 Corinthians verse, and I saw this in, uh, on Instagram. A guy, I'm sorry, forgot his name. He mentioned this. So the First Corinthians chapter seven, verse one to to three, or or just the first two verses. And the Lord Jesus Christ also said in Mark uh, six. I'm sorry, Mark ten, verse five. Because of the hardness, he's talking to the Pharisees and scribes. Because of the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this uh, precept but from the beginning of the creation God made the male them male and female one male and one female so uh, marriage is between man male one and female one woman for this reason a man shall leave uh, shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife not wives wife and the two shall become one flesh. The two, one uh, husband, one wife. One husband, male, one uh, wife, female. Become, uh, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. There, uh, therefore, what God has joined together, let uh, no man separate i mean just please read the bible study buy a uh, buy a study bible uh for like 30 40 50 dollars they are not expensive uh, listen to famous known preachers like trustworthy preachers there are many of them and uh, but i mean i listen to those the famous ones dr john MacArthur, dr jeff jeremiah uh, body backham paul, paul washer I used to listen to Justin, uh, not Justin, uh, just, yeah, Justin, I believe his name is Justin Peters. So just listen to uh, trustworthy uh, preachers who put God before everything. You don't, if you want to know the true truth, you don't listen to um, uh, 
people who put their sexual desires before God. No, you listen to preachers, to Christians, you, you, you uh, ask Christians who put God before everything and anyone. So that's who, who you're supposed to listen to. And uh, also, the Lord Jesus Christ said we're not supposed even to look at a, a woman. Yeah. So five, Matthew five verse twenty-seven. You have heard that was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So this is, uh, if, if someone looks at a woman to uh, lust for her, she, he has committed adultery in his heart. We are not supposed even to look to have lustful uh, eyes or thoughts. Uh, so how how can like have a relationship before marriage, having sex before marriage is not a sin. If the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't want us even to look, to have even lustful thoughts or looks or eyes, how can we? So he's the Lord Jesus Christ is, is he's he's against. Uh, He's, he doesn't allow us to have uh, lustful thoughts or looks or eyes, but he's okay with us having sex before marriage. What I mean is is that I, like I said, they don't care how stupid they look and sound, because they are talking to people like them who only care about their sexual desires and to ignorant people. And this is the Lord Jesus Christ. The people who don't believe in hell. If your right eye causes you causes you to sin, pluck it uh, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish, than your whole body to be cast into hell. We think the Lord Jesus Christ here is is joking when he's mentioning hell. He's like a plane. Um, he's lying. No, hell is real. There is hell. And it's eternal, and it's severe, it's beyond our imagination. And he knows that, because he created this hell for, no, nah, not for us, for Satan and his fallen angels. But we want to follow Satan, we want to follow his fallen angels, we want to live like the devil, but we want to end up living forever with God. Not where Satan is going to live forever, no, with God. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you, for it is more profitable profitable for you that one of your members perish that uh, for your whole body to be cast into hell. He's saying like, uh, consider when it comes to sin, consider your members dead, like they're not there, like your eyes, your uh, hands, your feet, uh, your legs. Consider them, they are not there, because it would be better for you to do that than to end up all of you in eternal hell. And of course, we all know that like, severe uh, hell, uh, severe pun hell is a severe punishment. It's you're gonna burn forever and ever and ever and ever, and there is no end. And like I said, God is loving God. Yes, he had, he's uh, he's also holy. And God, he has done everything he. Uh, everything is needed to be saved. Uh, everything. He sacrificed himself so uh, us uh, who used to be his enemies uh, be saved from eternal hell and have eternal life. So pl please keep reading the Bible. It's very important to read the Bible and study the Bible and listen to real uh, Christians uh real preachers who put god first they don't put money before god they don't put their sexual desires before god anyone uh, a preacher or a christian christian or a, a, a preacher who puts anything or anyone before god even if you put your fa family before god that's not a not a mature christian not a real christian god bless you amen